Hi, I'm Paul Zielinski. I'm the illustrator of a lot of books. I've written some of them. And um, if you look at them, you'll see they, they look really different from each other. And um, I'm not on here to tell you how I made one thing or another and show you how I made them. It took a lot of time. I couldn't probably do a lot of the things on, in front of a camera that I did to make the books. But, uh, but I want to talk about just drawing, drawing things, drawing things that look real. There are different ways to make drawings look. They don't always have to look real at all. You know, you can either draw what you know, which is, you know, like a face is round, eyes are in the front of it, noses have sort of triangles. These things are all true. You have ears. But it doesn't look exactly like that to your eyes. If you want to draw something from life, copying a photograph maybe, or better than that is to really look at a person or look at a thing and draw it accurately, see what your eye is seeing, and uh, make observations like that. It's a little bit of a different thing. What you know and what you see are different. And one isn't better than the other. You can have wonderful pictures that are like this, but you can also have wonderful pictures that are like this. And if you're interested in making something that looks real, but you don't know how it keeps looking like this, and you think you want it to look like this, well, I'm going to tell you a few things about that. That's, that's my plan for today. The fact is, well, I'm going to talk about drawing faces, because faces are an important thing. I could, I could um, really uh, talk about a lot of different things because I've been drawing for a long time and I've been noticing that there are things that are in our heads that don't really match what, what we see with our eyes. For instance, a head, a face. You think, you know, you know it's an egg shape for sure, and you think, well, there's eyes, nose, and a mouth. That's a face, right? But actually, a face is only part of your head. So a head, maybe the, the egg shaped like this, your face only comes up to about here on it, and then your head keeps on going up farther. Maybe you have hair there. If the, the rule is, you see this in books, that the halfway point between here and here, which would be like that, that's not your nose, it's where your eyes go. I'll put eyebrows here. It's not exactly the same on everybody. But the fact is that the head is like this, but the face is just the front part of the head. The face comes up like this. The face doesn't even go all the way to the edges because when you get farther to the edges, you're going back and there are ears. What you're looking at is three-dimensional and what you're drawing is two-dimensional. What you're drawing is flat and what you're looking at has depth. So that makes it a different thing. So that when a head moves in space, everything changes. For instance, if this person were looking up, way up, you could imagine even the same outlines of the head, you'd have eyebrows here. Looking down, they'd have eyebrows here, and the head would come like that, and the face would be all down here, because the third dimension makes a lot of difference. So this is a head, and like I said, the head isn't the same as the face, because the face only takes up some of the head like this, and the middle of that is where the eyebrows would go. So the eyes are not going to be all that big on this face, but everybody knows, right, that an eye is this shape like an almond. But it's not exactly like an almond. Uh, for one thing, the inside of the eye and the outside of the eye aren't exactly the same, because in the inside you have the tear duct, so it continues like that. And the other thing is that the lower lid and the upper lid aren't exactly the same because of a few reasons, but the lower lid tends to be more straight across and flat, and the upper lid is more round. So I have eyes here and eyes here, but it's not that simple again because it may be flat, the lower lid, But 
on the upper lid is variable because when your eyes open and close, I don't know if you've thought about this, but the bottom lid moves almost not at all, and the top lid is where, where the muscles are. The top lid is what opens and shuts. So the, the top lid can be like this, or this, or this, or this, depending on whether you're open or closing your eyes. Another little thing that I you may not know is that the cornea, no, I'm sorry, the iris, the colored part of your eye, is sticks out a little bit from the eyeball, and that means that it pushes the lower lid out a little bit so that when you're looking this way, the lower lid has a shape like that, and when you're looking this way, the same lower lid is more like that. But that's a small thing. The big thing is that the upper lid can be anywhere from here to here to here, depending on how open your eyes are. And when it's open a lot like this, for most people, it bunches up and there's a little fold underneath the eyebrow here. So some people, because of where their ancestors came from, some groups of people have different shapes of skin and the fold is more or less, but I have a fold anyway. Now, here's the thing that I think is really interesting, and I didn't know this for a very long time. When your eye is open, like this, where are you going to draw the eyeball? The fact is that the pupil, the dark round part in the middle of your eye, the top edge of your pupil sits right up against the edge of your upper eyelid. And when your eye is closed like this, or you look because you're looking down, it'll be like that. And when you're looking up like this, way up like that, it will be like that. And when I thought about it, that made a lot of sense because, you know, it takes energy to hold your eyelid open. So you're going to relax and let it down as far as you can until it starts getting in the way of your vision. And the pupil is what you see through. So as soon as your eyelid starts covering up your pupil, you're not going to see as well. So then you stop lowering your eye and that's where it sits. If for some reason you are not using your eye that way, like this, you know you are not relaxed and there's something special and interesting going on. Another thing, I don't even remember, I'm not looking this up, but I don't remember there's a formula that says how big the uh, iris is compared to the whole width of the eye. And I believe that it's half. I believe that from here to here is half of from here to here. But I also believe that when you're very little, your eye your uh, eyeballs are not that different in size from when you grow up, but your eyes are, your head is, a diff is much smaller. That means that your eyeball is actually taking up more of your head. And even though the eye shape is pretty much the same on little children, their eyes use up more of the, the, uh, you know, the, the I'm sorry, the iris uses up more of the eye and there's less white showing. And you have a younger look. Right? Doesn't that, doesn't that look younger? So, this is really my talk about the eyes. Some other time, I could talk about noses and mouths, because every one of these features has things about them that you probably, they're probably just different 
from the way you think of them because you haven't really looked, because you haven't really drawn very carefully. But once you do start looking, you see them differently. The last thing I'm going to say about the eye is that for most people, the line across the eye from the inside corner to the outside corner goes straight across. Of course, that means that because your head is three-dimensional, that straight across line is going to be like this sometimes when you're looking up. And like this when you're looking down, that's the straight across line. It doesn't mean that it's really actually straight, right? Not when you're looking down, but when someone's looking down at you, I mean. Now, if you're somebody who that's not true for, and your eyes don't go straight across from the inside to the outside, say the outside of your eyes start here, and the inside are down here with the tear duct over here, and the outside edge over there, and the eyeballs like this. There's an easy explanation for that. If this is your eye shape, then very simple, you're a cat, right? So, now for me, do a lot of looking and drawing, and enjoy yourself. <laughs>